Sean is very well informed about everything that's in the wine business. He's a very intense person in many fields and as you talked with him you know that you see uh, all his various interests in life. He also has a tremendous amount of things to share and to teach you. I didn't really know Sean before although I, I've lived in Bolinas for 10 years I've never seen him or met him which is pretty common among lots of people in town who say I've never seen that guy. Wow what, what does he even look like? What to do with this thing to make it not do that? <laughs> He's a fine craftsman, and there's not many winemakers like him. <laughs> I read these things in trade publications and say, how do you make Cabernet? And it's like they're reading from a software program. Sean is interested in thousands of things. Actually, there's not one thing he's not interested in. But... But anyway, I just simply grew up in the movie business. I wasn't well suited to it at all. It's not my temper. Hey, you guys, keep it down. We're rolling. You know, you can't find good help. You really can't. So anyway, he doesn't stick to his theory. Say, oh, I always did it this way. I'm gonna keep doing it that way. It's very impractical. It's a lot of trouble. I think it's gonna go one direction and it goes a complete different direction. You have to go with that. There's a magazine called uh, Practical Winery, and my ex-wife saw me reading it once. Said, well, dear, you should really start one of your own called Impractical Winery. <laughs> I told that to the publisher of Practical Winery. He wasn't as amused as he should have been, but he doesn't have much of a sense of humor. I was a chemist and Eric was an architect. Never license. You always have to be careful and say that. The other architects get upset. So I realized, okay, let's leave the city. I quit my job today. Do you want to quit yours? <laughs> she is one of two goats that we bought to keep the pasture from getting overgrown. And he kind of got out of hand from there. I bought one goat and we named her Skitty Nicks. And we never named another goat after a singer because she was extremely large, she never shut up. We had two houses and two cars and, and I was miserable. We'd always wanted to someday come up here and have a farm. And we realized, you know, someday is virtually never going to happen or we're going to be old and crippled and unable to do anything or something. And we, we've got to do it now. It didn't start with, oh, well, we're going to make cheese. It started with, we're going to make more of our own food and we're going to make it viable somehow. I think you reach a point where you have to do what you have to do. So we decided, okay, that's something we can live with. And so we came back here and had to start learning how to make cheese. It's an incredible amount of work to try to do it right, to try to do it responsibly. We really feel very strongly about local food. People buying organic blueberry who have been shipped by plane from Chile. Uh, I think it's totally meaningless. This is what you live on. And you don't think, Gia, I wonder if I could get my brain surgery a little cheaper. You know, it's food. It's your life. You have to be prepared to fight for your ideas and go against the grain to get them. Successful business is a business where the person who's running it knows the next move intuitively. The difficulty for a lot of people is that they're going to hear a lot of naysayers in the process and they adulterate that move to the point where it's no longer has the strength that it needs to have to be successful. You have to take chances or else you're going to be stuck, you're not going to do anything. This is David Latimer, I'd like to introduce you to. He's my collaborator and publisher of Ten Birds with One Stone. And we've had a fabulous time putting together what we 
deal with a profound book. This book actually addresses things like transparent business practices. One of the challenges for business people today is to be ethical and honest without taking advantage of other people, yeah. without exploiting people. And I believe this book gives people practical guideposts to do that. I've basically come up with all of these little slogans that are going to validate this intuitive process. I think the title does give you a hint how to really maximize your efforts so that it, it has a radiating effect. Almost like dropping a pebble into the water. It affects in 360 degrees. They're little epiphanies. And they come from looking at what's going on around you and integrating that into your approach for everything that you do. Merrick's had so many successes that you have to ask, what is the common denominator in all of these different things? Well, it's merit. These are the things that have worked for me. And I think if you do this, you're likely to be successful. If you can find the authentic core, then you listen to the inspiration that comes from that place, and almost you cannot fail.